Hello all, my name is Prabhakar. I am making a series of videos available to you to learn Amazon Web Services. And in this session, we are going to talk about Amazon Elastic Beanstack and how we can uh, deploy the Flask application. In this session, we are going to focus on the brief about Elastic Beanstack and create an Elastic Beanstack environment and discuss the Elastic Beanstack environment configuration and how we can create a Flask application, deploy that Flask application into uh, Elastic Beanstack. What is Elastic Beanstack? Elastic Beanstack is the fastest and simplest way to deploy your application on AWS. To simply use AWS Management Console, a GitHub repository or integrated development environment such as Eclipse or Visual Studio to upload your application. And the Elastic Beanstack automatically handles the deployment details of capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto scaling, and application health monitoring, and a lot many more. Within minutes, your application will be ready to use without any infrastructure or resource configuration work on your part. So you don't require to spend much time for the infrastructure setup and the configuration. Elastic Beanstalk will take care of everything. There is no additional charge for Elastic Beanstack. You can pay only the resources you want to use uh, as a part of Elastic Beanstack. Elastic Beanstack, it will launch the set of additional uh, AWS resources such as EC2 and Elastic IP and volume and deploy the application. So we have to pay uh, for those resources only. We don't require to pay any special charge for the Elastic Beanstack. Let's check the lab how we can uh, create a Flask application and deploy that Flask application into Elastic Beanstack. So uh, let's go to uh, AWS uh, Management Console. And here uh, inside the services, you can find Elastic Beanstack. You can just type uh, Elastic. And inside Elastic, because inside AWS, many services are Elastic, that is uh, scale up and scale down is based on user requirement. So here I'm choosing Elastic Beanstack. And uh, so here there is a big debate on the Elastic Beanstack as uh, is it an infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service. Here I would debate uh, and I can say Elastic Beanstack uh, is a platform as a service because Elastic Beanstack uh, will take care of uh, all the resources provisioning and resource management and application stack and application deployment and the health monitoring and a lot many more so within a beanstack itself so that that's why I, I i can say that okay so elastic beanstack is a platform as a service let's create uh, uh, here the stack okay so i'm creating the stack here so specify your application name so here i'm uh, specifying my application name is uh, prabhakar demo okay demo app this is uh, my application name, I'm using it here. And uh, these application tags are nothing but, uh, these can be used uh, as environment variables. I can specify a database connection string or username and the password, uh, some other parameters inside of my tags and I can retrieve inside of my application so, uh, for running that, okay? So as of now, we don't require to specify any application tags here. And coming to the platform, this is a very important section here. So inside this is a platform, I can decide that, okay, whether I'm deploying application for Docker, maybe Java, Node.js or PHP or Python or any other technologies. So here I can select the Python and uh, the recommended version for the Python already uh, selected that, okay, which version you want to run um, Python. <coughs> Next is uh, Python uh, recommended version is uh, 3.02. And one more option is that application code. So here, if your application code is ready and at the time of uh, creation of uh, the, your environment and the Beanstack, so you can directly go ahead and then uh, uh, upload your source code here. And if required, maybe, so if your code is in S3 URL, so you can specify uh, S3 URL also here, and it will automatically pull the code from the S3 URL and then do the deployment. Uh, I'm selecting that, okay. So sample application, which will indicate that it will launch the predefined template application. And on top of that, okay, I can deploy my own application here. And going to the configuration part, so inside this configuration part, there are a lot many things are available here. 
so this elastic bean stack uh, provisions and operates infrastructure and manage the application stack so that you don't uh, have to spend uh, the time for developing an expertise on the infrastructure part so because it will also keep underlying platform running on your application up to date uh, with the latest patches and update instead of you focus on writing a code uh, rather than spending uh, time management and uh, uh, configuring the servers and the databases and load balancer firewalls networks and etc so you don't require to spend much time on that and uh, here so in this configuration section i can define that okay so which kind of software uh, packages I, i need to use it and the second is what kind of instances actually i'm uh, using it here and the next one is uh, what kind of capacity i can choose it okay so like uh, here i'm using t2 micro it's a single instance type i'm using it so if i want to go ahead with uh, a uh, multi instance for the load balancing type so i can go ahead and then uh, configure the load balancing and here it will add some cost for you but this is a demo instance so that's why i'm go i'm going with a uh, simple instance single instance and uh, the next one is that um, the composition of the instance okay is it a on demand instance or spot instance if you go for the spot spot instance and it will add some more cost for that and uh, so at the same time so you can choose the type of the instance okay based on the number of operations and number of request you can choose the type of the instance and it will decide okay number of cpus and the ram for that and um, here elastic bean stack automatically scales your application up and down based on your application specific need using uh, easily adjustable auto scaling settings that auto scaling settings i can select um, inside this load balancing part for example uh, you can use the cpa utilization metrics and uh, trigger the auto uh, scaling factors and um, so uh, whenever uh, with the help of uh, elastic bean stack your application can handle uh, peaks in the workload or uh, traffic while minimizing your cost so uh, if the requests are very huge and the cpa utilization is very huge and at a certain point of time i want to actually uh, scale up my uh, instance and uh, if there is no uh, peak uses then i want to actually scale down my instance so then accordingly i can configure it as per my requirement and um, you have a freedom to select uh, aws resources here such as uh, amazon is to instance type whether i want to go ahead with uh, the larger instance or the smaller instance that up to me so uh, the user can decide okay so and so here i'm going with uh, t2 micro this is a very small instance and which is eligible for the uh, free tier also so i can go ahead and then i can deploy the application and uh, let's try that okay so how we can uh, create an application okay here i'm leaving these elements so as it is okay i'm not doing any configuration here so and um, after that okay so here it is a single a single instance it is a free tier eligibility and now i'm actually creating an app so go ahead and then create an app this will take a couple of uh, minutes to uh, launch the uh, environment so by that time i'm keeping uh, the recording as a pause now uh, my uh, elastic uh, bean stack is ready and uh, if i go to the ec2 instance go to services and click on ec2 instance so it will create a uh, respective aws resources uh, in order to run my flask application and here uh, it actually created um, one of the ec2 instance and one elastic ip here and one volume and one security group here and if i go to the ec2 instance i can find that okay what kind of ec2 instance and um, and here i'm using a t2 t2 to micro and here is uh, my elastic ip which i'm using that so this is a uh, elastic ip static ip even if you restart your is for instance but still uh, the ip will not change and uh, let's go ahead and then create a flask application and run this flask application into um, your elastic uh, bean stock so for that uh, i have created a folder inside my machine called aws elastic bean stack so here i am creating an application uh, and a file python file here but keep in mind that okay Well, if you use any file name like uh, xyz.com or app.com, okay, app.py or xyz.py, so Elastic Beanstalk will not recognize that. Okay, so it is always recommended to use uh, your application, uh, your file name as application.py. So I can use the application.py file. Okay, here is my application.py file, and here from uh, Flask, I import and Flask. 
uh, here I'm actually uh, doing some fast forwarding here. So I'm not explaining each and every feature of Flask here because uh, this tutorial is for the Elastic Beanstalk. So uh, and I will make another video where I can explain more details about the Flask and how to create application on the Flask and what are the components are available in the Flask. So here I'm using the demo application here. So I'm creating uh, the Flask object here and I'm putting uh, some decorator here. Okay, and uh, hello world. And uh, Dev and return that, okay, here is my hello world. Okay, and after doing that, okay, so you can run your application and by doing this, okay, you simply say that, okay, app.run and uh, you can enable the debug mode equal to true. So if uh, there are any issues on that, okay, you can see all the issues in the console itself. So this is how I simply created a, an application on that, okay. Now it's time to actually uh, deploy this application into my uh, Elastic Beanstack environment, which I have created earlier. So now go to the terminal. <clears throat> Inside this terminal, uh, I'm using a terminal uh, which I have created for for Python um, 3.7.1 or 3.5.4. So let's let's choose that uh, virtual environment. Here I'm using Anaconda, and it is open to you, and you can choose uh, any of the virtual environment as per your requirement. Python uh, 3.5 and uh, the four. Okay. So here and go to the work and uh, my automation and AWS Elastic Beanstack. Okay, so here are the applications. So if I go here and type the application.py, okay. And uh, yeah, so there is a mistake. Okay, I have to choose the uh, virtual environment of Python 371. Okay, so if I go to Python and to enter, it's a uh, Python 3.7.1, okay. So now uh, you try to run this application on your local machine and it is not giving any error and then application is up and running. So now it's the time to uh, create a dependency on the requirement.txt file for that. So for that I can use the pip. Okay, there are multiple packages are uh, involved uh, for running a Flask application. I can use a command called a pip uh, freeze. Okay, if I use the pip freeze, these are the set of uh, packages python packages which i'm using it on inside my uh, python environment virtual environment so what i can do i can use the pip uh, freeze and i can uh, write this data into my requirements.txt file okay so now if you see that okay i have a two files one is uh, application.py and second one is uh, requirement.txt which have uh, all the required uh, packages and uh, their respective versions so now my application is uh, running and which is also available and uh, also I tested it on my local machine. Now what I can do, uh, I want to actually zip this uh, entire code. So before doing a zip, so uh, here, uh, here is uh, my uh, virtual environment which I created earlier. And if I go to this virtual environment, so here it will load it with uh, the predefined uh, uh, application here. So this means that, okay, your settings and uh, Elastic Beanstack environment is up and running and which is perfect. And now it is uh, available for deploying and uh, uploading application. So here, this deployment is uh, quite different and easy to do that. You don't require to do any additional settings in order to uh, deploy the application. You can uh, zip your, uh, program your web application and you can upload that uh, zip file into um, in this section and elastic beanstalk will take care of uh, deployment part and uh, health and monitor checking and everything so for doing that okay so here i'm using the command as a zip and uh, followed by uh, there are two files i can use the demo and uh, demo app dot zip file and I want to include uh, these two files, application.py file and requirements.txt file here and press enter. And after doing that, okay, my uh, uh, demo app.zip file is ready uh, for the deployment. Now what I can do, I can go to Elastic uh, Beanstack and select an app and choose the uh, file. Okay, here is my Elastic Beanstack and choose the demo app. 
and uh, deploy it okay it will take a couple of minutes for the deployment and as well as uh, doing a health check let's wait for that app will take a couple of minutes uh, to deploy to deploy it on the elastic bean stack uh, so by that time so i will walk you through that okay these are the set of events and the logs which are happening on the elastic bean stack in order to deploy the application now if you see that okay uh, health is okay this means that okay the, your application is successfully deployed and if if there are any issues you can click on the causes okay it will show you the detailed log on that okay what kind of errors so other than okay if you find any errors like a degraded and uh, downgraded or any of the issues this means that uh, Uh, so there is an issue with your application that's why the app deployment is failed so after uh, seeing this kind of view and uh, the log okay so you can go to this is the application deployment url you can click on this application url okay so here if you click on this url so it will open another tab okay there you can see uh, the text which you actually uh, written on that so if you modify something on the text okay let's say if i put uh, h1 tag here and there is a font and uh, i'm putting something font color is a red color and uh, so closing the font tag and uh, h1 tag okay and save that and again go here and then uh, make a zip file okay and uh, go to uh, the app deployment and select that file and whenever you choose the same file and the same environment so here this version label will be uh, updated automatically earlier it was a sample application 1 and now it is the sample application 2 this is how the version label will be automatically maintained and at any point of time you can go ahead and then uh, revert back to the specific version so today i'm running the version 5 and uh, for the client demo i want to revert back to uh, version 4 so i can go ahead and the uh, in this section okay the deployment section so the i can go ahead and then i can uh, revert back to my previous version so and uh, here is an uh, event log so i can also check that okay if i click on the logs okay i can see the more details about the log for last 100 records under lines and then full log details i can uh, find it from the system so if i click on this log okay i can see all the logs okay which are the logs are um, enabled in order to deployment so now my application is um, deployed if you see that okay here is an uh, change on that this is how at any 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 kind of uh, application including uh, the rdbms and then um rds okay so dynamo db so any kind of database enabled application also we can easily uh, deploy it on elastic bean stack we don't need, we don't uh, we don't require to uh, worry about um, uh, infrastructure part because uh, everything will be uh, taken care by uh, elastic bean stack so here uh, while uh, deleting uh, environment you have to make sure that so and you have to go here and the easy to and you have to check with uh, elastic ips because uh, uh, here is the elastic ip which is assigned to your ec2 instance uh, as a part of uh, a beanstalk environment setup if something is goes wrong and then you deleted all the instances but this elastic ip is not deleted then it will add some cost for you but uh, one of the beauty of aws is that if you delete uh, beanstalk so what happens it will delete all the resources uh, which are associated to um, your beanstalk like it could be a volume or it could be a key pair or security group or elastic ip all the instances will get uh, clean up so if you delete the uh, environment so this is how uh, we can go ahead and then uh, do the uh, flask application deployment on uh, elastic uh, beanstalk and hopefully this lab uh, give you a chance to work with elastic uh, beanstalk and uh, flask application deployment and see how this will work we come to end of this lab and thanks for watching this and i will see you in the next lab